morning, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. It is really good to be back. Really good. And um, I'm guessing that you all probably know from people coming up to me that most of you probably know that I had to go down to um, San Antonio um, because my aunt died. And I just want to tell you all, thank you so much for your prayers and for your encouraging words. And um, they were very much felt. I, I just felt like I was lifted up so much of the time that I was there. And so I really appreciate that. And I am so happy to be back. You know, when you're gone for a while, it, it just makes you appreciate so much more what you have that you've taken for granted. And so I just came back. I, I could barely even wait to get home. You know, it's a little different from when you go on vacation. You're like, oh, I don't know if I really want to go home. This been sort of nice. <laughs> but I um, was very happy to be home and I'm really happy to be back here today. So, um, and I have to tell you through everything that I experienced over the last week that it was really, as always, I shouldn't say it's amazing, but it always is amazing to me how God works through our circumstances to reconfirm who He is. Every single time, everything that you go through, if you look back on it, that's what you see. And it was no different this time with this situation for me. I looked back at it and I just thought, how great is this that God showed his faithfulness to me? Here we are learning about faithfulness. And in my circumstances, it played out to a T exactly what we're learning. And he was faithful in his teaching me. He was faithful in my circumstances. And I'm hoping that you all will see that he is faithful to you today as well. So, and I, um, gosh, to say this is a hard one because there have been so many things going through my head that I think, oh, I'd love to share everything with them, but I can't share everything with you. That would be a little strange. But if you ever want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I'd be glad to share <laughs> a little more. I, I loved the definition, and I wasn't here, and, and Johnny Sue's teaching from last week didn't get put online for some reason. I couldn't pull it up. And so I have no idea what she taught you last week. So if there's some repetition, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I guess that's just the way it's supposed to be. By hearing and hearing. <laughs> but I have to say, I have to say, I absolutely love the definition. Part of the definition that I found for faithful was habitually true. Is that one of the ones you all talked about last week? That he's habitually true. That's the one that really stuck in my mind. That God is habitually true. That means he's just, his truthfulness, the fact that everything he does is true, the fact that everything he will do is true, is habitual. It's, it's a habit. It's, it happens all the time. And I love that. So I, that just stuck in my mind. Okay, God, you are habitually true. You are faithful. Because for me, I I thought faithfulness is sort of a hard word to def define. As a matter of fact, this morning, my son, who is in sixth grade, said, you know, I just hate it when teachers ask us to define words that everybody knows what it means. He said, like, when the teacher says, well, define hard. That we all know what hard is. Why do we have to define it? Well, I think faithful can be sort of that way, that we use faithful all the time. We're gonna, we need to remain faithful to our friends. We need to be faithful in doing our homework. We need to be faithful to our spouses. Our God is faithful to us. He never changes, he's faithful. And we sort of throw this word around. And yet, it's good to go back and define it, isn't it? And to find a definition that just drives it home for you. Because when you don't define something, even something that is just a normal everyday word, sometimes it can be like, it is when you take advantage of the fact that you're home and then you go away and you come home and it has a fresh new meaning, a fresh way about it that you missed and you realize how much you love it and how much you take it for granted. I think the same thing can be with words. It's great when you look them up and I hate looking words up. I just have to tell you my entire life I fought my mom on having to look words up in the dictionary. <laughs> I was one of those kids. But now going through these studies, I realized how, what a, a wonder, what a, a gift it is to be able to look up these words and to find out that we have become too comfortable with words sometimes. And we need to look at them and get a fresh new perspective on them and realize, faithful, he's habitually true. Oh my goodness, that gives a new depth of, of meaning to this word. And so now that I've pummeled that forever, <laughs> well, look up your words, okay? Just look them up. 
So I just love that. I, I love that he's been habitually true. And throughout scripture, he's faithful to the people in history. Just like what we just learned in that video. From generation to generation, no matter who you look at, whether it be Abraham, Moses, David, through Jesus Christ, the covenant to the new covenant to us, for his people, for the Gentiles, he is faithful to his people. And we can look back through scripture and know that he is always faithful to his people. And then all of a sudden, something started taking root in my mind throughout this last week. And I'm going to try my best to, to bring it back around. So follow me here for a moment. I started thinking, wow, we really simplify faithful, don't we? And I think we have a tendency, I have a tendency, to look at God's faithfulness in a sort of selfish way. Because that's the first thing I think of. Wow, God's faithful to all of his people. That means he's faithful to me. And then it turns into something that's about me, which it is about me. He loves me so much that he is faithful, which is so wonderful. And yet there's so much more to this. It's not just that he's faithful to me. And I have this great quote that just, I thought, captured this so perfectly. Because as I was mulling this over, I started reading some more by other pastors and and other theologians about faithfulness, and I came across this quote, and I was like, that's what I'm trying to say. It's by John Piper. There is always something more ultimate than God's faithfulness to his covenant. Namely, God's faithfulness to God. Okay, now just let that sink in for a moment. I'm going to read it again. There's always something more ultimate than, God, than God's faithfulness to his covenant. Namely, God's faithfulness to God. Okay, so I tend to look at it as looking at God's covenant to his people. He's always faithful, and that is so true. But you know what's even bigger than that? Is that he's faithful to himself. He is habitually true in who he is. That will never change. He will always be faithful to who he is, and that's how he's continually and perfectly faithful to us. So this is wonderful news because that's even a bigger reason to trust in God's faithfulness because we know that it isn't just about us because we're finite. It's about Him. And, and that's our chief end here. Our chief end is to glorify God. It's supposed to be about Him. We're bringing it back around to being about Him here. He is faithful. And this is the glue that holds all the truths that we've been learning about together. All of his attributes are held together, not just that he's faithful in his attributes, but he's faithful in himself so that none of his attributes will ever fall through the cracks. His attributes will always hold together by his faithfulness. So, bring it down, and I've got to read these because I haven't memorized every single attribute order. He is faithfully knowable. If you go back to the very beginning of this study, he's faithfully knowable. He's faithfully solitary. He can't not be solitary, okay? He's faithfully Trinity. Faithfully the Trinity for us. He's faithfully self-existent, self-sufficient. He's faithfully our creator. Okay, He's habitually true in being our creator. That's never changing, and he's never going to not be faithful to who he is as our creator. He's faithfully our sustainer, preserver, and provider. He will never not be true in this aspect of who he is. He will not. He's faithful to us because he's faithfully who he is in his attribute. He's faithfully holy. He's faithfully eternal. He's faithfully omnipresent, faithfully omniscient, faithfully omnipotent, faithfully wise, faithfully immutable. He's faithfully faithful. Doesn't that seem like a really huge concept to you? I mean, I don't know about you, but I started thinking about this, and I, I just thought, wow, this is bigger than just about me. Which, that powerful faithfulness, when it isn't just about me. I just, I love that. And what great news that is. Because the fact of the matter is, is that we're not faithful. He has to be faithful, because we're not. Every single time that we try, there's going to come an end point in the road where we're going to drop off 
and we're not going to be faithful to him. And we're not going to be faithful to people around us. And it's a sad thing, but that's a part of our sin nature. But it's okay. It's okay because he's faithfully faithful to us. He's faithful through his, gen his son, Jesus Christ, who, just as Judy was reading her prayer, we're celebrating his birth. Why? Because he's faithful in who he is. And he will not deny his promises to us because he's faithful in who he is. And he sent his son because he is faithful. So you might be wondering, well, what made you think of this, Sarah? I mean, this is sort of a backdoor approach to talking about faithfulness. And I have to be honest with you, the funny thing is, is that um, I, was, I was in San Antonio sitting in my hotel room thinking about everything that had happened. <coughs> and God took me to James 1. And um, just a little background here. When I first got on the plane to go to San Antonio, um, I knew at that point, I knew that my aunt was dying. And in my family, there's only three of us left in my immediate family, and, and I don't have other family that is close enough for us to be in contact with. And so I have two people in my family, and it's my mother and my aunt. They're sisters, obviously. And so when I got on the plane, my aunt was still alive. People thought that she was, you know, going to be stable at least for a couple more days. And, and my expectation was, and my prayer was, Lord, just keep her here until I can see her. Just let me go say my goodbyes. I've experienced before, um, as a matter of fact, with every family member that I've had that's been close to me, what has happened is I don't find out until too late. And I haven't been able to say my goodbyes to, to loved ones. And so that was the one thing that I, was really important to me. I wanted to be able to say goodbye to her, and I had talked to her, um, but that was not to be. Somewhere in my flight, she passed away, and and I do believe that she's a believer in Jesus Christ. So I do know that I will see her again in heaven, which is a great joy. That He's faithful to us. He's faithful to her in that. But um, it was, as you can imagine, at the moment, a devastating realization that once again. I was late. That's how it felt to me. I didn't make it. And God had chosen not to answer that prayer. I had many people praying it. God had chosen that that was not to be. And so I took that and I went back to my hotel room that night. And as you can imagine, I pulled my eyes out. I think as anybody would. And um, it, it was a difficult road at first. But it was very interesting to me and very much a comfort to see what God had for me during those few days that I was there. That immediately the next day, God started showing me his faithfulness. He started placing pieces of the puzzle. I had this incomplete puzzle of everything that had gone on. And he started through different people in different situations giving me another piece to stick in the puzzle and another piece. Before long, this picture started becoming very clear and I was given this total and complete peace that no Sarah don't you see I am faithful because even though you thought you knew what would be best for you and what would be best for your family and those are good things by the world's standards I think anybody here would agree that's what you would want and that's what seems like a good thing and yet God showed me but I knew it all, and I am faithful, and I am faithful in doing what is right and what is best for you because I have your best interest at heart, even when it's the more painful route. And when I realized that, I realized, God, you are faithful. I wasn't supposed to see her before she died. I truly believe that. I see it very, very clearly now. Do I understand completely? No. But I can see his faithfulness in protecting my heart. His faithfulness in the situation that was very complicated. And I know that he was faithful. And then he was faithful in bringing me across paths of people that we needed to talk. And, and he gave me opportunities to share about his faithfulness with different people who needed to hear it. And other people who ministered to my heart at the same time. You know, while I was in San Antonio, 
I had multiple people, and I didn't even realize how many people that I am so thankful to have that have just surrounded me and supported me in this. I had several people text me verses from God's Word, and they were perfect verses. It was the type of thing where you read it and you said, this is perfect. God, you gave the scripture to me. Over and over and over again, I got scripture. And you know, for a circumstance like that, lots of times you'll people will be drawn to the same scripture over and over again, and you'll get the same one. Out of all of those scriptures, not one of them was repeated. Not one time. So every single time I opened a text or I opened an email and somebody sent me a piece of scripture from God's word, it was like a brand new, fresh bit of faithfulness from him. That my word is living and active, Sarah. And look, I don't even have to repeat myself. I have something fresh and new for you every single day. I have something fresh and new for you every hour. And I'm going to carry you through this because I am faithful. Over and over again, as I looked back, I started realizing, God, you were faithful. And he drew my attention after that because at the time, I couldn't even open my Bible. I, you know, I've probably been there. There are just times where you're in the midst of grief. And at that moment, you're not going to open God's word. And that's the time when he's faithful and he brings it to you anyway. He says, it's okay. I know where you're at. But I am who I am and I can't be who I'm not. And I've got this for you. I'm not going to stop being God just because you didn't open my Bible to me. Right? And so um, the third day, I opened God's Word. And I started reading from James because uh, this is a, an encouraging verse for me. And I'm sure you've read it before. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, and perseverance must finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. You know, as I read that, all of a sudden, I realized that I have been missing something in this verse. I mean, this has been a really encouraging verse to me, too. Okay, there are going to be trials. And Lord, you have them here so that my faith will grow. So that I will be complete, not lacking in anything. This is important. And, and I'm going to have faith that that's why you have these things. And as I'm looking at it, it just this understanding started pouring over me. Sarah, once again, you stop short of what I really have here. This verse isn't really just about the trials. That's not the point. And it isn't about your faith. It's about my faithfulness. Okay? This verse here, this whole part, I, it's about God's faithfulness. It's not about Him being faithful to me and my faith. If, if that's what He desires out of it, that's the end result. But the actual point of it is that He is faithful. And so if you're looking, as we've talked about, if you're looking at who God is and you're looking at like through the lens of who God is, when you read this passage again, and you look at it as God is faithful, then it's going to look completely different. Okay, so then I started reading this, because I thought, first I need to look at this in the fact, Lord, that you are faithful. So then I started reading this passage, and this is what it sounded like. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Because I am faithful. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. Because I am faithful. I mean, if you start putting this in here, you start realizing none of this can even happen. This is a work of my own. Having greater faith and perseverance in all these different things, if I read this without the fact that God is faithful, this becomes a work. Okay, I'm going to persevere through this trial, and I'm going to become more persevering, and I'm going to have greater faith, and then it's all about Sarah, right? And God started going, but Sarah, did you, don't you see my faithfulness? Is that you couldn't work this one through, okay? When you're going through these times, you can't always work it through. You were grieving, and you could not work out your faith you could not work out your perseverance. That wasn't for you to do. It's something that I'm doing in you because I'm faithful. And that's why it can happen. Okay? And I actually, 
I have a little exercise here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a little bit more of the scripture and I want you all to respond here so you can sort of hear how this works. And um, I really only got this exercise, I only thought of this last night, so we'll see how this works out. It'll be a little experiment. So I'm going to read James um, 1 through, or 2 through 12. 1, 2 through 12. And when I pause, what I want you to say is, because he is faithful. Okay, because that is the underlying, it girds everything, right? It's the belt that holds everything up. Can you talk about that? The belt that holds everything up. Okay, so consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. Because this is the if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generally to all who find um, without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Because he is but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Because right. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position, but the one who is rich should take pride in his low position, because he will pass away like the flower, for the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossoms fall and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. Because he is Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Because he is All these things are true because he's faithful. And there, it's all about him. Isn't that great? I just love that. I was really excited when I read that. I just thought, I'm writing this right down right now. I'm taking it back for Wednesday. <laughs> so let's see where we're at. Um, you know, it really isn't that I have faith. It's not about me. It's that my faith grows because of those times that I look beyond my expectations and focus on what has been provided what has been provided, and how I can see how faithful God is because what he has provided. Not because how he answered what I wanted, but how he provided for what I needed. And that's really hard because sometimes it takes a while to see that. But if we can remember that it's all because God is faithful that any of this works. It's all because he's faithful that I can even have faith. <clears throat> Then we can stand and we can look back expectantly on our lives. And we can look forward expectantly with greater faith because we're looking at him and we're looking at our lives remembering that God is faithful and so we can be expectant. And I think that when we're expectant for him to be faithful, and I, I'm not good at this, I'm just telling you right now, that sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't. But for me personally, when I'm looking at my life and at life around me through the lens of our faithful God, that he is faithful, then I'm not looking expectantly for what I want him to do. I'm looking expectantly, wondering what he is going to do. Which, that's much easier to bear because we will always be disappointed when we don't get what we want. But we will never be disappointed with what he has to give. I have this um, story that I wanted to read you. I just thought this was so great. And it's, um, it's by a, a pastor named Pete Frisco. That is actually, he is a pastor down at a church down in Texas where my family goes to church, or Frank's family goes to church. And I just thought that this was a great story that gives uh, a good analogy, a good picture to his faithfulness and focusing on his faithfulness as opposed to focusing on what we want or what we think we need. I'm going to read it to you. 
and he actually looks at this through the view of contentment, but I still think this really shows his faithfulness. The best things in life, including contentment, cannot be bought. Contentment requires freedom from both fear and greed. Recognizing God as the provider of our needs frees us from fear. Recognizing him as the owner of everything frees us from greed. As a provider, God is totally predictable in his faithfulness to provide and totally unpredictable. That. He's totally predictable in his faithfulness to provide for us. He's always faithful, and yet he's totally unpredictable. We're never going to know how he's going to do that. When, when World War II drew to a close, many malnourished, fearful orphans were placed in camps where despite excellent care, they still slept very poorly. An understanding doctor began giving each child a piece of bread at bedtime. Not to eat, just to hold. Any hungry children could get more to eat, but when they were finished, they would still have this piece of bread just to hold. The children began to sleep peacefully, knowing they would have food to eat the next day. God has given us his guarantee faithfulness, our piece of bread. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Jesus Christ. Philippians 4.19 As we cling to his promise of provision, recognizing his ownership and control, we can relax and be content, whatever the circumstances. Isn't that great? And whatever the circumstances around us, and whether or not we are faithful to him, right? If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself, right? 2 Timothy 2.13. He cannot deny himself. He is faithful. And that's what I really saw this past week. God is faithful. And he, he's faithful in a way that what he does is even though I don't know what next week brings. And I know that grief will still come. And I know the struggles will still come. Through this experience, he's given me that bread to hold. And that bread is his faithfulness. Okay, he's faithful, and I know that I will have what I need to nourish my soul because he is faithful and he's given that to me. And that's what we have to hold on to. And that's good news. So Anne has found this <coughs> fantastic, just a wonderful song that I love by Chris so. Tomlin. Yeah. And she's going to play that for us. And I just hope that you just take that piece of bread today. In all of your circumstances, everybody has something. And if you don't have something right now, you're going to have something. It's just part of life. And <coughs> just take that bread and hold on to it knowing that his faithfulness is that bread, and that when you look at your life, you can know that that's who he is. He is faithful. 